Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for November 6, 2020, recurring around 4.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, again, we have Tropical Depression Eta, which is still a tropical depression, but is expected to strengthen into a tropical storm by later today or tonight. Again, you can see the storm right now very large in size, and that is because, again, we have a lot of upper level of uh, factors now playing into this as well. So it's causing convection to break out over a wide expansive area at this point. And again, all of this is heading in the general direction of Cuba first and then over across Florida and is just going to be hanging out near the western coast of the Florida Peninsula uh, by the time we get into next week. Now, if we take a closer visible satellite image here on Tropical Depression Eta, you can see here that again, widespread convection building, you don't really see a well-defined center of circulation at the moment. Uh, again, this is a very broad gyre that's located in through here. So there's a general area of cyclonic vorticity that, that stretches all the way here. You can kind of see how some of the mid-level energy uh, kind of extends all the way into the eastern Pacific Basin here. And the other part of this uh, vorticity belt extends all the way up into Cuba at the moment. And this is causing widespread showers and thunderstorms to break out along this kind of convergence flow in the low levels, diffluent flow uh, in the mid and upper levels. So uh, we do have a low level center of circulation down and through here. And in fact, we have had aircraft reconnaissance data that's been in there today. Now we can see what we've been talking about in terms of a very broad center uh, and kind of this gyre flow. You have a wide area of cyclonic vorticity and embedded in that you have an area of generalized more concentrated uh, circulation but it's still a very uh, kind of oval shape it's oblonged it's not a uh, you know true you know very tight low level center of circulation uh, so this is still a very broad circulation although of course it retains uh, ETA because there is still parts of ETA that's located in the uh, circulation but by and large this is trying to form a new circulation and it's going to take a little bit of time for all of this to consolidate again it's not going to happen overnight but it will likely get tropical storm status uh, overnight. Now, if we take a look here at the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, there's a couple of very important things that we should be talking about today. And again, we've started to come into some better agreement where the storm is going to go in the next couple of days. We've gotten some better understanding of, of what the atmosphere is going to be like. The hurricane, uh, you know, hunters are certainly helping, and we're going to be getting upper level reconnaissance data as well from the NOAA 4 a high altitude jet uh, that is going to be flying near and above the storm environment. But today, again, you can see right now the track forecast right now calling for a storm uh, by t tonight. And then by tomorrow, by 12 p.m. tomorrow, this is uh, kind of now just chilling out here uh, more nevertheless to the west uh, of the Cayman Islands. And again, the Cayman Islands are located right through here. The tropical storm warning has been issued for parts of the Cayman Island. And then by tomorrow night, by 12 a.m. on Sunday, now this is starting to approach Cuba here. Tropical storm warnings have been issued for the main island of Cuba and then also for the island of youth, a tropical storm watch, and a tropical storm watch all the way to the western part of Cuba. So this is going to be a very broad storm. And what that tells us is that the impacts, uh, especially after crossing Cuba, Cuba will be rather broad as well. Now you can see that the track has slowed down a little bit. By 12 p.m. Monday, this is sitting near Key West right now. Again, this is approaching Key West, uh, moving generally towards the north first, turning towards the you know northeast and then northwest, and then turning back westernly. And this is going to play a very huge role in exactly where things go. Right now you can see the cone of uncertainty extends all the way uh, from here, the western tip of Cuba, all the way up here to the Florida Panhandle and all the way inland over the uh, Florida Peninsula. What this tells us is that the there's a large range of outcomes here at day five. This is a, a lower than normal confidence forecast track. 
Uh, and with that being said, the center of circulation could be anywhere from the far central Gulf of Mexico all the way over to uh, near Tampa, Florida, and all the way northward up towards near uh, Pensacola and the Big Bend uh, region of Florida, and all the way towards the north and west just sitting south and east of Louisiana. So there's a wide range of possibilities, but we're starting to get into a better idea what is going to happen. Now, in terms of the rainfall potential, again, because this is such a very large storm, this is going to cause a flooding rainfall over a multi-day period. And because eventually this is potentially going to be just kind of sitting there near Florida, uh, especially the, near the Western Florida Peninsula, within the next couple of days or so, we're going to have to watch for a prolonged period of flooding rainfall potential. Right now, you can see from the Weather Prediction Center in conjunction with the Hurricane Center, uh, they are going with a forecast of anywhere from 6 to 10 inches of rainfall across the Florida Keys, portions of the Bahamas, including Andrews Island and Nassau, and all the way over towards uh, near Miami, and all the way uh, you know, just to the south and east of Lake Okeechobee. Uh, after that, you can see the flooding rainfall potential ex extends well inland just south of the I-4 corridor from about Tampa Bay, Melbourne, uh, southward, and then again, you can see your lesser rainfall amounts up here. Now, these, you know, numbers don't mean you're not going to have heavy rainfall and flooding concerns. This goes all the way out to uh, about November 11th. So it's a five-day forecast. Uh, but again, this is very dependent on where the five-day position is here because the five-day position here by Wednesday is far enough where, you know, off the Florida Peninsula, off the Florida coast, that this isn't bringing very significant rainfall to portions of Florida at the moment. And instead, it's just kind of sitting out here. However, there's a wide range of possibilities. And as of right now, I think we're going to start to see the track being shoved a little bit more further towards the east based on the latest guidance that we have, which we'll take a look at right here. This is the 12, uh, 12Z GFS forecast, the 500 millibar flow uh, in the atmosphere. And we're looking here at the 500 millibar vorticity and geopotential height. So this is what we've been talking about over the last several days. We knew that we were going to have, we, we were very certain uh, that we were going to have a, a, you know, an upper level low that's developed and kind of cut off from a parent trough. So this upper level low has now formed and uh, now it's starting to retrograde towards the south and east, just a hair. And at the same time, we got our storm right now that's trying to organize down here. We also have a big ridge building towards the north of, uh, you know, over portions of the northeast. So if we move this forward, this is 24 hours from now by uh, tw or by 7 a.m. tomorrow. Again, the upper level low uh, kind of expanding in size, drifting slowly towards the south and east, uh, but just kind of milling around here. A big ridge developing towards the north here. And at the same time, the storm is out of generally uh, the flow out of the southwest moving towards the north and east because again we have a trough that's kind of digging in across here and that's kicking our storm towards the north and east which we'll show here in just a moment in the upper level wind pattern now after this time you can see what starts to happen is the upper level kind of flow becomes much more aligned uh, for the storm you can start to see the storm becoming better consolidated but at the same time we have this big fetch of this partial upper level low getting you know fed into the storm now what this is doing is it's going to force a lot of dry air uh, on the back side again to the front side of it you've got relatively moist air and on the back side of it you have relatively dry air that will be pulling around into the circulation so it's really only a matter of how much dry air does this upper level low this broad upper level low draw into that circulation is it enough to kill it off uh, you know, to the point where it's relatively weak. We've seen, you know, different model solutions, and we'll go over those here in a moment. Now, if we continue even further here on the GFS 500 millibar flow, again, by uh, 1 p.m. here, this is by uh, 1 p.m. on Monday, we can start to see that the storm is now approaching the Florida Peninsula and the Florida Keys, and a lot of that uh, moisture and a lot of this vorticity is sitting over the Florida Peninsula at this time. Now, generally what this means is you see anywhere with the vorticity, that means generally associated upward moving air in the atmosphere uh, that's generally confined with the stormy weather. So we can reasonably infer 
that there's going to be a pretty good amount of moisture and heavy rainfall setting up for somewhere from the I-4 corridor southward all the way down towards the Florida Keys and even the Bahamas uh, at this time. Again, the main impacts, at least for the next uh, little while, is going to directly come for portions of the Isle of Youth, the Cayman Islands, and obviously Cuba out in here. Now, if we move forward with time here, we can see that the storm uh, kind of eventually is now just kind of hanging around portions of the western part of the Florida Peninsula. And again, we have a ridge that's out here, and we also have this trough that's in through here. And because the storm is relatively weak at the time, you can see on the 500 millibar flow, it's not very strong. It's a relatively weaker storm because we have a lot of dry air and vertical wind shear out of the southwest here. And because of this, it's keeping our storm weak, but it's also keeping it hanging around for several extra days instead of actually going somewhere. And because of that, we might be dealing with a prolonged period of heavy rainfall and flooding concerns uh, for portions of Florida over the next couple of days. And even across portions of the Bahamas, too, we'll have to watch for that flooding rainfall potential. Now, the Euro here, this is the European 850 millibar level. So this is at 5,000 feet off the ground. And we'll notice there's a couple of key differences here. And uh, one of which here, this is Saturday by 12Z. So this is 7 a.m. Again, the model here on the Euro is much slower where the GFS had this now approaching... Uh, the Cuba coastline. So what this is going to do is give some time for this ridge to start building in, but also this trough doesn't have as much uh, influence on the storm at the very current moment. And eventually, now on the 12Z Euro, again, this does jump. It is certainly a little bit further towards the north. If we look at where it was uh, compared to yesterday's run, this definitely had it a lot more towards the north, and it is hugging the Florida Peninsula and the southwestern Florida coastline at this moment. And eventually, though, it, what ends up happening is the ridge becomes so dominant out towards the west here or out towards the north and east that this flow out of the west here kicks the storm westward and then back generally towards the north and then kind of moving in somewhere and dissipating in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, again, whether or not this happens or not remains the biggest question. So far, uh, the... National Hurricane Center is following the Euro a little bit more, and given the fact that the storm is a little bit further south today, it is entirely possible that the Euro, at least in the short term, is the one that does win out here. But again, we'll have to see. Now, in terms of the h wharf, this is the 60 run here from the h wharf, so the 1 o'clock model run. Uh, we can see there's also a couple of differences in the h wharf. First of all, if we move this out here to about uh, 10 p.m., we'll go out uh, till 1 o'clock in the morning tonight. And again, a couple of things are happening here. Uh, again, we got the storm generally moving out of the northeast here. You can see in the 500 millibar flow, actually, this is the 850. So we'll go uh, out here to the 500 millibar flow. We have this big upper level uh, trough that's digging an upper level low that's kind of sitting out here across Texas and Louisiana. Now, you notice how this will dig and expand towards the south and east with time. We also get a ridge to the north that you can't really see, a big ridge toward the north, and the storm is getting steered out of the southwest to northeasterly direction. Now, at this time here, this is by 1 a.m. on Sunday, we can see that the storm is a very large mess at this point. You can see a large area of, of vorticity, but nothing really consolidated. And again, you got this big upper-level low that partial vorticity is getting stretched in here, getting mixed and tangled with an upper level system. Now this is going to create one or two things. This is also going to create a shear belt, but it could also create a dry air belt. Now eventually here on the H wharf here, this does become near hurricane intensity and move inland over portions of Florida. Now again, this track right here would bring a lot more moisture to parts of Florida. And again, you can see that if we really look on the 700 to 400 millibar layer relative humidity, we can see a lot of this green here. This is representative of very moist air in the atmosphere. And also behind it, you can see this tongue of very dry air. Now we back this up here. And if we see what happens is that this dry air is going to be entrained at some point because of the southwesterly vertical wind shear and this dry air getting uh, tongue, tongued in from this upper level low, it seems relatively likely that we will have something tried to get entrained in here at the very moment, but it remains to be seen exactly what happens. 
Now, eventually, the storm may find itself in a pocket of relatively more favorable conditions out here near the Bahamas and Florida uh, over the next couple of days. And then eventually, uh, this could sneak just enough in between the dry air and the wind shear and the moist air to provide a, enough rate of intensification to make this a hurricane. Now, you notice here, again, on the H-Wharf, this is much more inland. And it also keeps it much closer to the coastline for several days uh, before kind of dry air really makes this thing succumb. But there's a lot of dry air or a lot of moist air on the east side of this, as we would expect. And that might be something that would have to watch for a prolonged period of heavy rainfall and potential for flooding. And again, just for reference here, the 12 zh mod model, much of the same solution. Again, it comes over actually into the Bahamas. Uh, near Andrews Island and Nassau, and then curves in, making landfall in Florida. This would probably be uh, somewhat of a hurricane at this time, crossing over and just kind of milling around for several days before crossing back over the peninsula. And this is something that we've seen as a possibility if we look actually at the track forecast here. Uh, again, you can see most of the models now are suggesting this turn at some point back towards the peninsula. So we'll have to see if that does occur or not. So... And there's going to be a lot that we're going to have to watch here over the next couple of days or so. But by and large, right now, it seems as if we probably will have a storm to watch over portions of Florida and also uh, the western or eastern Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days or so. All right. With that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow. And by the way, as a quick short note, we are going to be setting up our live hurricane cameras to capture the data. All right. Have a great rest of your evening. This is Mike Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.